All right, I think we're good now. Okay, so welcome to the Unit Circle. Um, I know these plates kind of stick together, but you just need one, and then you need one of each of these triangles. Basically, everything that we do from now on is um, reliant on a few kind of special triangles and special angles. And so you probably don't know them. So we're going to build them together. I gave you the other worksheet over here. It's the unit circle. And this is going to be nice and clean. Mm -hmm. So once we build it, we're going to transfer all of this over onto this sheet. So that's what we did in alpha today. So we will probably not get to this today. We'll probably get to that tomorrow. Oh, also, while we're talking about it, we will not do a quiz tomorrow. No right. quiz tomorrow. I think it's going to be, I'll look during lunch, but it'll be Monday or Tuesday or maybe even Wednesday. I'm not sure. We'll have it sometime next week. So, Andrew. Eventually, you will for this next quiz. No, you're going to use the unit circle. So, you eventually will need to know it. Um, every teacher teaches this a little bit differently. I just have found the unit circle to be the most successful. So that's what we're doing. If you hate this and you're like, Miss White, what is another way to learn this? Just ask me. But I think that most of us kind of get used to this. We enjoy this method once you get started. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your paper plate and I want you to fold it into fours. So I want you to fold it in half and then I want you to fold it in half again. And I'm gonna take black and trace those lines. Essentially, we're making like a coordinate plane. So just in four, fold it in half, fold it in half again. <laughs> In black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's okay if your lines are not straight because this is kind of like our rough draft. That's why we're doing it all on a paper plate and eventually we'll make it nice on that piece of paper. So you should have something that kind of looks like this. Basically what we've got here is an X, Y graph. So I have an X axis, which is my horizontal line. I've got a Y axis, which is my vertical line. What we're gonna do on every line that we draw, we're gonna label an angle. So we're going to have degrees and radians for those angles. So we'll, you don't need to write this down, but for each one of the lines, we'll have a degree, we'll have a radian, and then we'll have an X, Y point. And that X, Y point is going to get really important in a little bit. Okay. So we're going to start. Um, I'm going to label this first line. Um, do you remember the, the beginning of 4.1 where I talked about standard position? Standard position means that the um, one ray is always on the positive X axis. And then the rotating ray is somewhere else in one of these other quadrants. And you kind of like rotate around to get there. So all of these angles were essentially starting here and we're rotating counterclockwise to get to that angle. So if I start on the positive X axis and I don't go anywhere, I've gone zero degrees. So this first one is gonna be zero degrees. Okay. Let's go do all of our degrees and then we'll come back and hit radians with it. If I go from zero degrees and come all the way up here to the next line that we drew, how many degrees is that? 90, good. What? Why are we doing this paper on the paper plate? I mean, you can draw on the back. It's a little bit smoother on the back. Not yet. I'm, if I had a black marker, I would do this all in black. Great. This really isn't that deep, guys. Okay. Now I'm going to move over here. If I've gone from zero past 90, what am I at now? 180. Good. One more. What is that going to be at? Do it. Not yet. 270. 
And then if I go all the way back through and I do a full circle, how many is that is? How many is that is? Wow, this is gonna be a long day, 360. Okay, those are all my degrees. Okay, now to go from degrees to radians, what do I multiply a degree by to get into radians? Pi over 180. Pi over 180. So I'm essentially doing zero times pi over 180. What's that? Zero. It's just going to be zero radians. So I'm going to do kind of like a dash and I'm going to put zero over here. Those are not fractions. It's just the degree and the radian are next to each other. Okay, now if I think about it as 90, 90 times pi over 180, what does that simplify down to? Uh one half, like one pi. Good, one pi over two. So I'm gonna make this pi over two. All right, I don't wanna keep multiplying. That's gonna take a long time. Let's start using some fractions. So from here to here was half of a pi. Let's add another half of pi. What's one half pi plus one half pi? Or one half plus one half is a whole, a whole pi. So 180 is pi plus two. 180 is pi. Now what happens if I add one half to one whole? How many halves do I have now? One and a half, which is how many halves? Three halves. Three halves, so three pi over two. It is, but I want us to use fractions. Oh, mm -hmm. Yep, you're right. And then if I add another half to that, what am I at now? Two. Two pi, good. Two pi. Right, awesome. All right, now we call this the unit circle because it is one unit from the middle of the circle to any point along the outside. We are now doing our ordered pairs, which don't always make sense in our head, but I want to just kind of go over them with you. I know this looks like a much bigger distance, but from here to here is one. So my ordered pair here starts one. My X is one because I went left or right one. How much did I go up or down? I didn't, did I, right? Zero. That point's gonna be one, zero. What will that make this point up here be? One. Not one, one. How many left or right did I go? Zero, one. Zero, one. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of going to the right one, I'm going to the left one. What's this point gonna be? Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. And the last one, I'm going down one. Zero, negative one. Zero, negative one, good. Okay, these are what we call our quadrant angles, okay? Quadrant angles. Now, our next one we're gonna do is I want you to pick up your orange triangle. We're gonna put our orange triangle on the positive x-axis with the corner being at the origin, so something like that my friends on Zoom, something like this. You guys kind of see that? So you can read the triangle? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone know what kind of special triangle this orange triangle is? Right, right triangle. It's a right triangle. Good. Do you know what the other two angles are? Andrew? 45. 45, 45. Good. You know that because it's an um, isosceles triangle. It's a right triangle. And I'm going to tell you the other two represent the other special right triangle we know. Anyone remember what that special right triangle is? 30, 60, 90. Good. So I've got one where we're going to focus on the 30. The blue one focuses on the 30. The green one focuses on the 60. So we're going to do that over to the side. Um, before we do that, though, let's draw all of our angles on here. And then I'll have us write some side stuff off to the side. Now, 45, what's special about 45 degrees? with um in reference to what i'm looking at here it's half good so in order to draw your 45s i want you to do this in half again but line up your black lines together and make them touch to get halfway between the two black lines so you're going to fold it in force again but we're kind of rotating so it's not the same force does that make sense JJ's got it. Like yeah, it's like diagonal. Oh, so like this? Or... Oh, so fold it so your black lines touch each other. 
And then you can either fold that in half again, or you can undo it and make your other black lines touch. So now all four of your quadrants should have a line down the middle. Yep, so now I'm gonna have you trace this and now I want you to use one of your colors. We are looking at the orange triangle. So if you wanna use an orange color, do it. If not, yeah. So every single crease we have here in that color, yeah, so you should have two big lines or like four lines, one of these quads. Definitely like that. Orange, orange. Exactly. Orange, orange. And so yours should look something like mine does on the board. I am sketching mine, so mine does kind of not look great, but do your best. Oh, that's really good. Let me try again. Better. They got orange, orange. So we're gonna trace those in orange. See that I've got orange in my little part. So you should have something that looks something like that. Everybody, all right with that? Okay, we're gonna label the degrees and radians, and then we're gonna do like a little team timeout to figure out what the ordered pairs are. But let's do degrees and radians while we're here. So I told you the first one in this triangle is gonna be 45 degrees. All right, let's do my degrees and radians as we go along. So we're gonna do 45 times pi over 180. 45 actually goes evenly in to 180. Does anyone know what? times 45 gets me 180? Five. Not five, four. four. So it becomes pi over four. So my radian degree for 45 is gonna be, I'll try to make that a little bit bigger. It's gonna be pi over four. Okay. Now, when I go to do all of my other ones, I'm gonna do them in reference to either 180 or 360. I'm gonna think, don't draw this line, just, just look at me. I'm gonna think about, okay, if I was at 180 and I went backwards 45, what would my angle be there? So I'm gonna think about 180 minus 45. 135. 135, good. Okay, now we're gonna be, do our radians while we're here. And like, yes, I could bring 135 over here and multiply by pi over 180, but I don't wanna do that. Let's work fraction wise, okay? All of my 45 degrees are gonna have a, a pi over four. They're just gonna have a coefficient with them. I can think of this as fraction work. Instead of doing 180 minus 45, we're gonna go with our radians pi minus pi over four. Pi minus pi over four. Or if you're like, what are these pi's doing here? Just get rid of them, make it one minus one fourth. What's one minus one fourth? Three fourths. So my radian degree here is going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so we did that by going backwards from 180, so we minus from 180. Now to find the one that's in the third quadrant, we're going to add one, um, add to 180. We're going to add 45 to 180. What's 45 plus 180? 225. Same idea with before. We did one um, pi minus pi over four. Now we're gonna do pi plus pi over four to get here, or one plus one fourth. Two, 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 five. Wait. I want a, I want a fraction. That's not wrong. I just want a five fraction. Over four. Five over four. Very good. Five pi over four. And then the last 45 degree angle, I'm gonna think about in reference to 360. So I'm gonna do 360 minus 45. I believe that's 315. Mm -hmm. And just like we were doing before, this time we're gonna do not just pi minus pi over four or, pi, or one minus one fourth, we're gonna do two pi minus pi over four or two minus one fourth. One, 
point I would like a let's say seven seven pi over eight. Yep. Eight divided by four is two. Perfect. All right, I'm going to move to the other side of the board to talk about 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. You can either write this on the back of this unit circle or on the back of the other paper I gave you. We're going to do like a tiny bit of notes. So wherever it makes you happy to write this, I want you to write this somewhere. Now, the fun thing about this is I taught you this back in geometry. The other fun thing, though, is I know that you've slept a little bit between now and last time we were in geometry. Am I right? Yeah, maybe. Okay. We're going to do it like that. Thank okay, goodness. All right. So 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. I'm going to draw one of them right here. And I'm going to label 45, 45, and 90. On, our... on like on the back of your unit circle. Mm -hmm. Just not on the front face, not where we've been doing all of our work. On the back or on that sheet of paper is good too. Okay. Now, if you notice on the orange triangle that I gave you, it has a blank for the bottom. It has a blank for the side. And then it says that the top is one unit. Because it's a unit circle, I told you anywhere on the circle is a distance of one away from the middle. Okay, now what I also want us to remember is back in geometry when I taught us about you, um, about these special right triangles, we had labels for these 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. Do you remember generally what was the rule with the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, Andrew? Very good. These sides are X's because they're the same. And then this side is X root two. So back in geometry, we would we I would give you different lengths of sides and you'd be like, okay, well, I know the legs are going to be the same. And then the hypotenuse is equal to root two times the leg. Also, though, I sometimes gave you the hypotenuse and we would have to think, okay, whatever the hypotenuse is equal to. I'm going to have to divide it by root two in order to get my leg. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to set my one unit equal to x root two, and we're going to solve it to find x, which is going to be how long each of those legs are. Okay. Can you divide one by root two? It's kind of ugly, right? Why did you do that, Ava? Because you can't have a the, the radical on the Good. We have to rationalize this. So this becomes root two over two. So both the bottom and the top are going to be root two over two. Why did I, um, I didn't flip it. I rationalized it. I multiplied by root two on top and bottom. So one times root two is root two. Root two times root two is two. All right, let's do a little bit of something fun real quick. Let's do sine, cosine, tangent, and then we'll move back to our unit circle. So underneath that, I'm going to write sine, cosine, tangent. I can even remind myself if I want that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And I want to fill in what sine, cosine, tangent of these 45s are based on my opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay. What's my opposite side in this picture? What's opposite? Uh, Good, this one, root two over two, right? What's my adjacent side? The other one. And what's my hypotenuse? Good, it's one. So as I do this, okay, opposite is root two over two. Hypotenuse is one. Root two over two divided by one is just itself, right? 
root two over two. So my sine here is gonna be root two over two. Cosine is the exact same thing, right? Because my adjacent side is also root two over two. So root two over two divided by one is still root two over two. And then the last one, my tangent is gonna take a little bit of effort. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's gonna be root two over two divided by root two over two. When you divide the same number by itself, you get one. If, that, if that's confusing to you, you can flip and multiply by the reciprocal. Root two over two times the reciprocal will be two over root two and everything cancels. So we just get one. Okay. Now I wanna fill in the ordered pairs on our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Before we move on, I want you to take your little orange triangle and I want you to write root two over two in for the vertical distance and root two over two in for the bottom for the horizontal distance. Okay. So now I'm coming back over here. The reason that's helpful The reason that's helpful is because when I put this on my unit circle, which yours should match up a little bit nicer than my, when you put it on your unit circle, you see how for the most part it goes from the, like it almost goes all the way to the corner. Yeah. So that means my X is going to be whatever my horizontal distance is. So what's the X value of this point going to be? Not too high. No. Wait, one, over two. Root two over two. It's my horizontal distance. It's the horizontal distance across the base of my little triangle. From the corner to the bottom, we just labeled that as root two over two, right? So that's gonna be my X value up here, root two over two. What's my vertical distance then? What's my Y? What's also root two over two. Every single one of these orange lines is gonna have the order pair of root two over two. But as I move through the quadrants, I'm gonna change with negatives and positives, okay? So when I get into the second quadrant, is my X gonna be positive or negative? Negative. negative. So it's negative root two. What about my Y, is that positive or negative? Positive. So it's gonna be negative root two over two comma positive root two over two. What about in my third quadrant? They're both negative, X and Y are negative. Negative root two over two, comma, negative root two over two. And then what about my fourth quadrant? What's my X gonna be? Positive. And what about my Y? Negative. Now, the last thing I want to do before we go to lunch is let's actually label our quadrants so we don't have to like think through that again. I'm going to label, quad, like I'm literally going to write quad one and I'm going to write, it should be positive, positive. Oh, I forgot the one, quad one. It doesn't have to be that big, but I want to, I'm making note of it in here so that I can know that everything in the first quadrant should be a positive, positive. What, what happens in quad two? The X should always be in quadrant two, negative. And then the Y should always be positive, good. We're gonna do the same thing in quad three where they're both negative. And then we'll end in quad four where like you just told me a minute ago, it should be positive X and negative Y. Okay. That is a perfect stopping point. So we're gonna time out to go to lunch. We'll come back and keep going. I'll pause.